Hello, welcome to another relevant history lesson, where today we'll be talking about a very powerful man. A man who never lost a single battle. A man who is a legend among legends. Okay, he was probably the best military leader ever, but I might be exaggerating a little. I mean, there's two legends that I could think of right now that I find more interesting than today's topic. That would be Rasputin and Pancho Villa. I'm of course talking of none other than Alex the Lion. Wait, what? Alexander the Great. If you have seen my past videos, you probably found out Alexander the Great is pretty important. I mean, each of the past three videos I have made show this picture. But why is Alexander the Great so important? Apart from the fact that he did a better job of merely conquering the entire world better than Hitler. Well, sit back and allow me to explain. Alexander the Great was father of King Philip II of Macedon or Macedonia, a city-state or kingdom in northern Greece. Since he was 13, young Alexander was tutored by Aristotle, one of the great Greek philosophers, until he was 16. Now, if you have seen my past video on ancient Greece, you might recall that I mentioned Alexander's father took over Greece in 339 BC. By then, Alexander was already commanding his own cavalry unit and putting down small rebellions and invasions that threatened Macedon. In 336 BC, King Philip was assassinated by one of his bodyguards. This gave Alexander the chance he needed to rise to power. After his father's death, the nobles and the military appointed him the next king of Macedon. Alexander was politically and militarily trained, so he knew what to do to ensure his position. He executed any political enemies, such as his cousin. One of the first challenges Alexander faced as king was putting down rebellions in Greece when city-states heard of the death of Philip II. After securing Greece, the new Macedonian king with just 20 years of age began adding surrounding territories to Macedon. In 331 BC, he conquered Egypt, then Mesopotamia, but in 334 BC, he was already going for the grand prize, the Persian Empire. No, I'm going to win that grand prize! Congratulations, you won! Congratulations, you won! Congratulations, you won! I immediately regret this decision! Alexander started his main Persian campaign by invading the Mediterranean coast of Persia to block the Persian fleet. After securing the coast, he began invading the mainland. Alexander had already defeated the Persian Emperor Darius III in 333 BC, making him abandon the field. Well, the same thing happened in 331 BC, and soon after, Darius was killed by his own general and cousin Bessus. Is that how you say it? By this point, Alexander had already proclaimed himself king of Asia, but he was not happy with the death of Darius. You see, Alexander was very skillful when it came to politics, and he knew it would have been better to just have Darius surrender rather than having him executed. Alexander's political skills were also noted when conquering other lands. Such example could be how he didn't forcefully apply new customs to the people he conquered, but instead actually learn about the region he was at. He didn't harm cities that accepted Alexander and just surrendered as long as they kept supply lines open for his troops or didn't rebel. Otherwise, if they were fighting, that could lead to a siege of the city and the killing of all men while the women and children were sold to slavery. Alexander was also fair in government affairs to the point that he would execute officials who, went, who were found to be corrupt. Alexander also adopted Persian customs and troops to his empire, such as the custom of bowing down and kissing the hand of those who are socially superior to you. And the Greeks didn't like this. I mean, there are only two people that I would willingly kiss their hand. That would be priest and my nan when she's angry. Eventually, even the army was angry at Alexander. They had already noticed that Alexander was drinking a lot and he was beginning to have problems with alcohol. 
and even plots to kill Alexander were discovered, only for those who were involved to end up being executed. But things worsened when Alexander's troops reached India. In 326 BC, Alexander commanded his troops to begin marching across the Ganges River in India. As you can see from this map, that is very far from where they started, in Greece. So his troops were very angry and they muted Nir, and Alexander was forced to retreat with his tired troops. Alexander the Great stayed at Babylon, planning campaigns to invade Arabia. Nothing seemed to stop the unstoppable Alexander. It was until he was hit by a fever for 10 days, which led to his death in 323 BC at the young age of 32. He died doing what he loved. He overdosed. Don't think of it as losing someone. Think of it as gaining a guest room. I, I play a lot. I'm going to miss him a whole lot. <laughs> it's unknown what clearly caused the death of Alexander. There's many theories such as malaria or poisoning. But what historians clearly do know is that Alexander's empire fell as quickly as it rose. After Alexander's death, Alexander's generals divided his empire into separate nations. The ones I'm about to mention are the four main ones. The names of the people that ruled them, or the generals, are hard to pronounce because they're Greek, but I'll do my best. Cassander ruled Greece and Macedonia. Ptolemy ruled over Egypt and its surroundings. Seleucus took over Mesopotamia and India, while Antigonus governed over the eastern Mediterranean coast. But all of these empires will fall within 40 years of wars between the empires themselves, and because of the coming of another giant in history, Rome. Wait, what? Now I'm returning to the question at the beginning of the video. Why is Alexander the Great so important? Well, after watching this video, I got two answers for you. Number one, Alexander was always trying to make himself look good so that he'll be recorded in history as a very great person. Like maybe covering up his defeats. I mean, who can tame an untamable horse at the age of 10? Well, other than my dad. Anyways, answer number two. Alexander introduced the Greek culture and ideals to the lands he conquered, such as democracy. But in the end, which answer sounds more convincing? The second one, of course. Thanks for watching.